hey, everyone, you're here because you want to get past the headlines about large language models, right? Yeah. Understand what's really going on. Exactly. Well, today we're diving straight into something um, pretty fundamental, mm -hmm. how these things are actually stored and run. Mm -hmm. And it sounds technical, maybe, but... It's super important for anyone actually using them. Yeah, totally. Knowing this stuff gives you an edge, whether you're just playing around or building something complex. It affects, like, everything. Speed, cost, where you can even run the models. Absolutely. So we've all seen the, you know, the amazing outputs, but getting there relies on these practical bits, the formats, the optimizations for different hardware. It's key. Right. So our mission today is basically to unpack three main ways these models are packaged. Hugging face transformers. GGUF and MLX. And we'll definitely touch on quantization too. That's kind of the secret sauce for making them run efficiently. Exactly. The goal is clarity, you know? Yeah. Help you figure out which format might work best for you without drowning in jargon. Think of it like a backstage tour. How are these digital brains actually built and prepared? Okay, let's kick things off with probably the most common one people run into, hugging face transformers. It's uh, kind of the default standard now. Wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely spot on. The Hugging Face ecosystem is just massive, hugely influential. So what does that look like in terms of like the actual files? Well, traditionally you'd see .bin files or .pt. Those are standard PyTorch ways to save models. Mm -hmm. But lately they've really pushed .safe tensors. Oh uh, yeah, .safe tensors. I've seen that popping up more. Yeah, and it's pretty neat because it's considered safer. It avoids some potential security issues by just storing the raw data, no weird code execution possibilities. Plus, it usually loads faster. Okay. And then there's dot on X. You might see that too. That one's more geared towards uh, optimized inference across different platforms. But hugging face is more than just this file format, right? It's the whole dot package deal. Totally. That's the real power. It's not just the model weights. They provide tools for, well, everything. Training from scratch, fine-tuning existing models, running evaluations, and then actually using the model for inference. And it works with all the major frameworks. Pretty much. PyTorch, TensorFlow, JAX. It's designed to be plug and play. Yeah. Super versatile. If you're building or adapting models, chances are you're starting somewhere in the hugging face world. Right. Gotcha. So the big flexible ecosystem for development. Okay, let's switch gears. What about GGUF? Sounds a bit like a cartoon noise or something. Yeah, it does have a funny name. It stands for GPT GGML Unified Format. It's basically the evolution of an older format that got really popular with the tool called Llama.cpp. Llama.cpp. That's the one for running models locally, often on CPUs. Exactly. And GGUF is built precisely for that streamlined local inference, especially when you're using quantized model. Okay, local inference, just to clarify, that means running it on my own machine, like my laptop, not some cloud server. Precisely, your own hardware. And GGUF makes that surprisingly smooth. Its big selling point is that it puts everything into one single binary file. Everything, like what? The model weights, the configuration, the tokenizer, that's the part that understands the text, plus other metadata, all in one neat package. Wow, okay, one file. That does sound much simpler than juggling multiple things. Yeah, it makes sharing and running models, especially on your CPU, way easier. No more hunting for bits and pieces. And you mentioned quantization again. GGUF is good for that. Oh, yeah. It has fantastic built-in support for various quantization levels. We're talking 4-bit, 5-bit, 8-bit, different ways to shrink the model. Right, shrinking it making mm. it smaller and faster. Exactly. By reducing the precision, the sort of numerical detail of the model's weights, you drastically cut down memory use and speed up the calculations. It's how you get these huge models running on, you know, normal computers. So if I want to try out a pretty powerful LLM on my, say, decent but not amazing laptop, a yeah. GGUF model that's been quantized down to, like, 4-bit might actually work. That's the sweet spot GGUF often hits, yes. And it's the format used by great tools like Llama.cpp, but also user-friendly apps like Alama, LM Studio, Text Generation, Weibui. They all leverage GGUF to make local LMNs accessible. Okay, that sounds really practical. What's the catch? What are the downsides to GGUF? Well, the main thing is it's really focused on running the model inference. You generally can't use a GGUF file to train or fine-tune a model. Uh -huh. You'd typically start with, say, a hugging face model, do your training or fine-tuning there, and then convert it to GGUF format for efficient deployment or local use. Makes sense. Also, GGUF itself doesn't really have a built-in way to serve as an API endpoint easily, but tools like Alama kind of wrap around it to provide that API layer, which is super useful. Got it. So hugging face for the build 
building GGUF for the efficient running, especially locally on CPUs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's another player, kind of newer, getting buzz, especially for Apple users. MLX? It's right, MLX. That's Apple's own machine learning framework. It's yeah. specifically designed to uh, really take advantage of their own chips, the Apple Silicon you know, M1, M2, M3. Ah, so this is that tight hardware software integration we hear about, Apple building something just for their own stuff. Exactly that. MLX is built from the ground up for speed and efficiency on Macs. It uses the metal framework for GPU acceleration, leverages the unified memory. It's optimized for that specific hardware. And does it work? Is it actually faster? Anecdotally, and in some of Apple's own benchmarks, yes. For certain tasks on Apple Silicon, MLX can significantly outperform running the same model using, say, PyTorch on the same Mac. It also aims to be pretty clean, minimal dependencies, pure Python interface. Developers often like that simplicity. Interesting. So real performance benefits there, potentially. What about the model format for MLX? Is it like GGUF, a single file thing? Not quite in the same way. MLX doesn't really have its own distinct, widely adopted format like GGUF. To use a model with MLX, you generally need to convert it. Let's convert it from. Yeah. Usually from the hugging face ecosystem again. So you take a model trained or available there, and run a conversion process to make it compatible with MLX's structure. Okay, so like GGUF, there's often a conversion step involved. Yes, that's the typical workflow. Find a model, convert it for MLX. And of course, the big caveat is that it only runs on Apple Silicon, Mac OS only. Right. And while the number of models converted for MLX is growing, it's still not nearly as vast as the Hugging Face Hub. So it's powerful, but within a specific walled garden, you could say. Okay, that makes sense optimized but limited ecosystem currently. Now we keep circling back to quantization. You mentioned it with GGUF, it's key for efficiency. Let's maybe unpack that a bit more. What is quantization really? Yeah, it's super important. At its core, quantization is about reducing the precision of the numbers the model uses internally. Think of it like, instead of using highly detailed numbers with lots of decimal places, like 16-bit floating point numbers. Okay. You use simpler numbers, often integers, that take up less space, like 8-bit or even 4-bit integers. So you're compressing the numbers. But doesn't that lose information? Doesn't it make the model, like, dar? That's the natural question. And yes, it can introduce a tiny bit of accuracy loss, but modern quantization techniques are surprisingly good at minimizing that loss. And the benefits are huge. Like what? Well, first, faster calculations. Simpler numbers mean faster math. Second, much lower memory usage. Those smaller numbers take up way less RAM, meaning you can fit bigger models onto less powerful hardware. Oh, okay. And third, potentially better compatibility, because some chips have special instructions for handling these lower precision numbers really efficiently. That makes a ton of sense. So what are the common types we see with LLMs? Uh, well, FP16, that's 16-bit floating point, is often a good balance, keeps most of the accuracy, gives some speed up. Then INTA 8-bit integers, very popular for deploying on edge devices, phones, that sort of thing. Right. And then you get down to INT4 4-bit integers. That's where you can really squeeze large models onto, say, regular CPUs or systems with limited RAM. It's pretty aggressive compression. Well, 4-bit. Yeah. And then there's a really interesting technique called Kulora. Kulora, what's that? It combines 4-bit quantization with something called LoRa, low-rank adaptation. Basically, LoRa is a clever trick to fine-tune just a small part of a huge model very efficiently. Okay. So Kulora lets you take a massive model and fine-tune it using 4-bit precision, which means you can potentially do it on a single GPU with like less than 24 gigs of VRAM, which is much more accessible than needing a huge server cluster. Ah, so Kulora is more about making the fine-tuning process possible on less hardware, while the INT8, INT4 stuff is more about making the final model run efficiently. Exactly. Coolor helps you adapt the model without needing supercomputers. Then, once it's adapted, you typically save and deploy that model using regular INT4 or INT at quantization for fast, efficient inference. Gotcha. Okay, so how do our three formats, Hugging Face, GGUF, MLX, handle all this quantization stuff? Right, so Hugging Face has great library support. Tools like Bits and Bytes integrate well, making it relatively easy to apply various quantization methods, including the ones needed for QLORA right within their ecosystem. Okay. 
GGUF, as we said, is kind of built for quantization. It has native support baked in. You'll see these different GGUF types like uh, Q40, Q4KM, Q5KS. These represent specific 4-bit or 5-bit schemes with slightly different trade-offs. But the point is, GGUF expects and handles quantization really well, especially for CPU inference. And MLX. MLX. Its main strength right now is leveraging the raw power of the Apple hardware directly. Native built-in quantization support isn't quite as front and center compared to GGUF, its performance comes more from that hardware optimization. But it might come later? It's definitely possible. The field moves so fast, we could see more direct quantization features added to MLX down the line, but for now, its speed is mostly about the metal integration. Okay, wow. I think the picture is much clearer now. Yeah. Feels like if you're making models, training, fine-tuning, adapting them, Hugging Face is your starting point, your workshop. Mm -hmm. Generally, yes. If you want to run models efficiently, especially on regular computers, any OS, maybe focusing on CPU power, then GGUF with tools like Llama.CPP or Alama looks really strong, particularly for those quantized models. Yep, yeah, that's a great summary of its niche. And if you're living and breathing Apple, developing on a Mac, and want that peak native performance, squeezing everything out of your M-series chip, then MLX is the framework to look at. Couldn't have said it better myself. And quantization is the thread running through it all, really, making these powerful tools usable beyond just massive data centers. You know, taking a hugging face model, quantizing it, converting to GGF, maybe running it on a tiny Raspberry Pi with Llama.CPP. That's possible now. Or using a Llama with GGUF to spin up a local API for your own app. Exactly. So it really is about picking the right tool or combination of tools for your specific job, considering the model, the task, and crucially, the hardware you have access to. Precisely. Strengths and trade-offs for each approach. Well, this has been super insightful. Hopefully for everyone listening, this clears up the fog around these different formats and why quantization matters so much. Hope so. So as you think about your next project, consider that balance. Do you need the all-around flexibility and vast library of Hugging Face? Yeah. Or the targeted optimization of GGUF for broad CPU use? Or MLX for peak Apple Silicon speed? Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, this is a good nudge to actually try some of these tools out. Download a Llama, grab Llama.CBP, look at LM Studio, see what it feels like to run these models yourself right on your own machine. Yeah, getting hands-on is the best way to understand the differences. Definitely. So the thought to leave you with is, What's the right mix of that flexibility versus specific optimization mm -hmm. for your particular needs? Something to mull over. 